Uh, welcome back, everybody. Happy Monday. This is week number four of the positive message from Mrs. Richelson and Mr. Souza. Uh, we're happy to be here again and uh, are enjoying our, our opportunity uh, to send some positivity your way. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about controlling the controllables and ways that you can you know, avoid getting so caught up in the things that you can't control. So Mrs. Richelson is going to kick us off here this week. And she's going to share some slides and some information for you so you can do some great learning from it. So take it away, Mrs. Richardson. Hello. Thanks, Trevor. Okay, so we are here. I'm going to share. So we're going to control the controllables this week, as Mr. Sousa said. And um, I'm not sure about you guys, but I can be a control freak because I like to have everything a certain way in my life. But sometimes it's harder when I can't control everything. So it's, um, this has definitely been a learning lesson for me too, especially in recent days when we're dealing with so many uncontrollables. But, um, so I think hopefully we're all growing through this situation, but let's see here. Okay, so I wanna start off with a, um, a little quote. You can't turn the wind, so turn the sail. And to me, I like this one because to me, it basically talks just about that. So. You can't control the wind, but you can control aspects of what's going on. So you just change the sail direction and then you can make the changes that you need to. Um, so it doesn't always have to fall on what's going on in the situation. It doesn't always have to be, oh, well, you know, I don't have any control. So it's just going to have to be, that's not necessarily the case. So, and so how do we do that? How do we find and identify the controllables and and focus on the things that we can do. So this Venn diagram um, for me is really a great visual because we take the things that matter and then the things that we can control and that little spot where we where they overlap is where, where our focus should be. So um, moving forward, you know, and looking into the different steps of how you can do that and what you should think about and how you should frame your thoughts in terms of focusing on those controllables um, is really kind of, to me, a few steps. So practice and plan. This is a, you kind of have to practice and plan in order to be able to find and focus on those controllables. It's talking about all the things that we've been, Mr. Seuss and I have been sharing with you guys in, on our videos so far. So like focus on those things that you can and get to do um, and have gratitude for those things. Either being, figure out, despite this, uncontrollable situation that I don't have a lot of control over, where can I be the bean? Where can I change the environment by my actions? And to be able to do that, you got to be resilient and look for the opportunities in the situation at the moment and then mo move on from there. So um, that means you can't just, like, like I said, you can't just throw your hands up and then say, well, I guess I don't have any control over that. So it is what it is doesn't have to be that way. So acknowledge the situation, understand the parts that you don't have control over and be mindful of them, but that also will help you identify the parts that you do have control over. So um, it'll help you identify within the situation that you're dealing with, advantages to the situation. There might even be some benefits and opportunities that you can come out of it. So then from there, it will lead you to the opportunity to set goals in terms of okay, this is the situation, this is the part that is meaningful to me, combined with the parts that I can control, this is what I'm gonna do to make it a better situation, instead of being passive. All right, and then ready, set, go. This is where, once you've got your goal, have a plan, think about the opportunities, what are your goals, now you have a plan, then get to work. And then, but as you're, as you're going through and focusing on your plan and doing the work of making it a better situation, don't forget to reflect. So Mr. Sousa and I, after we, um, you know, as we have been doing these videos together, we have, you know, we do stop and look back and we're like, oh, okay, I think that one went well, maybe we should focus more on this. So always reflecting, always learning. I'm learning how to be okay with not having as much control in my life right now um so that's just an aspect of what we're doing i've learned a lot more about social media i've learned a lot more about um teaching things to my students online 
So just a variety of things that we're learning through all this. But you, no matter what, you have to believe. You have to believe in your goal. You have to believe in the why. You have to believe in the important parts, the, the parts that matter um, that you want to address while focusing on the parts that you have control over and the impact that they'll have as a result. So, but one important thing, you have to let go of the parts you can't control. Um, and again, that's really challenging for some people. When you, when you focus on the parts that you can, the parts you can't control kind of shrink in importance. And you're like, oh, who cares if I can't control that part? Because I can control this. And by doing, by focusing on what I need to focus on and that's um, the meaningful parts for the parts that matter and the parts that I can control, then that's the space that you're creating um, when you let go of the parts you can't control. So for example, when Mr. Sousa and I were in school with you guys, we loved being the positive influence, whether it was your wellness club or the be the being message that we would always practice because, you know, Mr. Sousa and I share a room. And um, we couldn't do that anymore. We couldn't, we didn't have control that there was a pandemic happening. We didn't have control that we couldn't see you guys face to face anymore because we all had to be home. But we did know that what matters to us is still continuing to get a positive message out to you. And we knew that we could control that the fact that we can reach you through social media and through email and a whole bunch of other avenues. So, you know, together or separately, Mr. Seuss and I were doing our own things in order to try and accomplish that. And so then we decided to team up, which was awesome. And hopefully we're reaching more of you and we're getting that part that matters out. We're, we're getting you positive messages, hopefully to help you through these challenging times, using the things we can control and creating a space for something better. So that is my little spiel here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna stop sharing and hand it over to Mr. Sousa. All right, thanks, Mrs. Richelson. I love the, uh, the fact that on the one slide, you tied in the three previous weeks of what we've done as far as gratitude and get to, as far as being the coffee bean, and as far as uh, building resiliency, all of those things can definitely help you in situations like this, where, as you mentioned, so much is out of our control right now, and um, we have to find ways to be in control of the things that we can. Um, the last word that you had on that slide as well about kind of the action step plan was believe. Um, and I'm going to call a quick audible, I guess, and you want to talk about belief real quick, especially at the suggestion of you. Um, I sent out the stay positive remind message this morning. It was all about belief and belief impacts positivity, it impacts happiness, and it impacts uh, success. Um, belief leads to commitment. Belief leads to change. Belief leads to being better um, and not believing leads to kind of settling, uh, being frustrated or apathy and belief leads to action. And, you know, when we take control, that's one of the things that we can control is our daily actions um, coming from and stemming from that belief. And I think right now, since we have been isolated, I think more and more people are finding maybe it tougher to believe in themselves or believe in a brighter future because oftentimes we're used to having people around us that believe in ourselves for us, right? Or instill that belief in us. And we get that feedback. Now it's been put on our shoulders to believe in ourselves even more than ever before. Uh, and one of the things that I tell my students often, especially if they're kind of getting down on themselves is I believe in you wholeheartedly a hundred percent every single time that I see you or whatever you're going to do but that means nothing if you don't believe in yourself. And I think about that as a, a coach, as a teacher, you know, I've always had a lot of belief in the players that I coach individually as a team, but the belief has to start coming within them first, then each other, and then it can kind of flow out from there. So I appreciate you kind of giving that feedback on the message you received this morning and uh, giving me the idea to talk about uh, belief because we need to believe in ourselves. We need to believe in our people. Uh, we need to believe in our actions as well. And when I think about the things that I control, I saw this quote uh, and it broke it down to really three simple things that we definitely have control over every single day. And it's our attitude, it's our effort, 
and it's our actions. And our attitude is our way of thinking about someone or something, a basically a mental state. Um, so when you know you have a bad attitude, sometimes that comes from things that are happening to you. When you have a great attitude, sometimes that comes from the things that are happening to you. We do have more control over that because even when things are bad, um, you're in despair, you're stressed out, you can still control your attitude and your thoughts about something or someone. Uh, your effort. So effort is a cautious exertion of power, all right, or taking a serious attempt. Obviously, you know more than anybody else when you're doing something, the type of effort level that you're putting in. How much effort are you putting into studying? How much effort are you putting into maybe your eating and exercise habits? How much effort are you putting into your sleeping habits? How much effort are you putting into your sports or your music or your acting or you know, your whatever, whatever thing that you love to do, what is your effort level? And people on the outside can see the hard work, but ultimately you know if you have more to give. So that effort is something that you always have a control over. And it's not easy to put in full effort to everything that we do even though we hear that saying all the time, give everything your full effort, because then you're not going to have any regrets. Uh, and then actions, you know, are basically um, facts or a process of doing something, right? So the daily things that you do uh, all the time are things that you control. So that attitude, that effort and actions. Outside of that, you know, if you break things down to their bare minimum, you don't have much control outside of those three things. And I love how Mrs. Richardson gave you kind of an action plan for when those uncontrollables, uh, those uncontrollables hit. And I think um, Damon West, the author, author of The Coffee Bean, broke it down even further just to make it real simple. What you think, what you feel, what you say, and what you do. Outside of those four things, he says, which you can kind of intertwine those with attitude, effort, and actions, you don't have control over anything. So what you think, what you feel, what you say, and what you do uh, those coincide with attitude, effort, and actions. And that's what we control. And when we start to realize that here are the things that are totally in my control every single day, we can start to, as you said, let go of the things that you don't control, but also formula, uh, formulate a way to respond to those things. Um, some uncontrollables, right? You're driving in your car and you blow a tire, right? Or your car breaks down like people freak out, they flip out. Yeah, it can be a scary situation, but you don't control that, but you can control how you respond to that. Maybe you didn't do well on a, uh, on a test, right? And you could look back and say, well, what was my attitude, effort, and actions towards that test? Did I put the full effort? Did I, what I, did I have a good attitude going into the test? Were my actions goal-oriented to do well, or were they not? You ultimately don't have control over what the teacher puts on that test, we're preparing you for it, but it's ultimately up to you to control the controllable things that you can and realize that sometimes you might have situations that you're going to struggle. You know, maybe you lost a contest, maybe you lost a game, maybe you didn't do so well uh, in a competition. And there were factors within that, that you couldn't control. I look at my golf, uh, my golf seasons, you can't control the weather. You can't control the speed of the greens. You can't control the wind direction. Those are all external factors that everybody faces, but the people that focus on, well, the weather was really bad. It was really windy. The greens were too fast. The greens were too slow. They were too bumpy. Uh, the course was too wet. The course was too dry. If you start looking at those things that you can't control, it's going to be tough to compete at your highest level. What can you control out there? You can control your mental state, your attitude, the effort that you put into the round and the actions that you're going to put forth from the first shot to the last shot. And that's why I like golf because there's so many parallels to life and so many sports have those same factors. It was just one that I could think of um, really easily. And then, so the uncontrollables come along and Mrs. Richardson did a good job of pointing this out. And these are two simple things that I heard respond versus react. A lot of the times we have something uncontrollable happen and we react. And we've heard this term knee jerk reaction that all of a sudden we don't even think about it. We just react. And usually it's in a negative way versus responding. Responding sounds a little bit more thoughtful. It's, it, it seems like you're a little bit more in tune with the fact that, yes, that's uncontrollable, but what are the aspects of this that I can control? And we can control how we respond to these certain challenges that we face. And then this one, um, right in the beginning of this, this pandemic that we're going through, 
um, was this term pivot versus panic. And John Acuff put that out there. So he decided to pivot in this situation, not panic. And I think a lot of people started to panic because there was so many question marks. There was so many unknowns about what is going on. What the, does this look like? How many people are going to get sick? How many people are going to die? Is this going to affect the fact that we're going to be able to make it back to school at some point? We obviously know now that we're not going back this year. Sports seasons, uh, you know, the robotics competition, just all these different extracurricular things that we started to panic. And instead, we probably needed to pivot a little bit more and focus our efforts on these things that are in our control. And we've mentioned quite a bit, you know, some things that Mrs. Richelson and myself have been through as educators. And we understand that students and other people across the country are going through all of these things as well and really um, trying to adjust to this different situation that we're in. We're living through unprecedented times um, uh, on, fact, uh, on top of the fact that right now in our country, we have a big divide of some things that are going on and I'm not gonna get uh, political or too in depth there, but understanding that what can I control in this situation? You can control the kindness that you put towards other. You can control the love that you give to your family and to those that you can still have contact with or even your social media platform. A lot of people watching this have social media, whatever it might be, what are you putting out there to contribute to the world? Are you adding more negativity or are you, are you adding more positivity? And you know, if uh, there was a quote I sent out last week, we can't help everybody, but we can all help somebody. And if everybody helps somebody, then there's gonna be a lot more of those everybody's that are helped. And so those are some of the things that I think about when, all right, I want to, I want to change the world, right? But I understand that I might not be able to do that. So I need to change the small world that I'm in to have that positive impact uh, as much as I possibly can. So as Mrs. Richelson said, we are living through a period of time that we never would have imagined and um, is completely unprecedented right now as far as the pandemic and other things that are going on in the world. So really, really hone in on each day when you wake up, the things that you can control and the things that are out of your control, find positive ways to respond. And, you know, as she pointed out, have that action plan for moving forward. Mr. Sousa, the, um, the, in terms of effort, like you might think, but why is it so much more effort right now to focus on working out or be studious and stay on top of my work or whatever it might be? It's because like you said, we don't have a lot of those supports in place right now because it does take more effort to do those things when you're not on a school schedule, when you're not surrounded by your teachers to encourage you to do your work, when you're not surrounded by your friends or have your workouts after school with your team every day. So you have to do a lot more of it independently, which we're not used to doing. So, and you know, even in terms of your attitude, so many times, when we're surrounded by that atmosphere, which we aren't anymore um, in person, it's, it's kind of easy to lose sight of what is my attitude on this and what is my stance on this and, you know, hard to remember the part that matters. So um, it's just some of that, you know, if you're having challenges trying to stay in that frame of mind, know that that's okay because it is harder when you're on your own and you don't have those constant reminders and schedules and structure in your daily life to help you kind of keep going and down the normal route that you would. So you just got to keep your eyes on the prize and follow the steps and just keep going through the reminders. That's the beautiful thing of these videos. You can watch them over and over again <laughs> if you need a good refresher or a little pick me up. So yeah. We are, we're so much more responsible for ourselves now and, and that can be tough. I think about one of the things that lights my fire every single day is just walking into the classroom and being there with the kids. And that is, as we, as we mentioned several times, something that we can't do anymore. And does sitting in front of a computer, uh, typing some things out or posting assignments or grading assignments light my fire like that? Absolutely not, but something like this does. So. I'm, we're making a concerted effort to do something that, you know, lights, lights that fire within us to feel like we're somewhat in a normal state 
uh, or a more normal state by doing this. And that's, I think, what other people uh, and students need to need to find that because what, you know, maybe there was a student that went through their day and none of their classes fired them up. But the reason that they were there grinding and doing and putting the effort in is because they had sports, they had extracurriculars, they had other things that are tied to school, which is a big part of our community, that that's what lit their fire to do those things. And with those things gone, now you're searching for, for more. So you have to keep doing that self-reflecting and, uh, and understand that, yeah, more responsibilities on your shoulders uh, to kind of get yourself going. So, and keep, yep. keep helping others. You know, if you just even yep. send a simple text asking somebody, how are you doing? All right. Or I'm thinking of you, or are you doing okay? You know, that means a lot to them. And that's going to mean a lot to you. You know, serving others is uh, a huge thing that, that, uh, you know, is the reason that we're in education and why we love doing what we're doing, even though it looks different now, it's still something that, that motivates us to, to be our best. Yep. Or have workout zoom dates like, okay, you know, let's do our workout together at three and, and you can talk still while you're working out or, you know, let's have a lunch date. What healthy thing are you eating today? And, you know, whatever it might be, there's little things you can get around. Again, if you focus on those parts that you can control, you can make it all better. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Uh, this probably fills our cup even more than it fills your <laughs> cup. And it's like, I, like we said, we want to, to be able to still contribute back to our school community in a positive way. And um, I'm glad again that we've been able to team up on this. So thanks for joining us on week number four. We'll be, thanks, back, everybody. At, we'll be back next week for week number five and continue to focus on the controllables and responding or pivoting to those uncontrollable situations and putting forth right. action steps. Have a great Have day. Great week. See ya. Bye.